Hello, I'm Sean Kent Hayashi. In this video, you'll learn why self-starting is an important competency if you want to become a star performer, grow to the next level, or become a more inspiring leader. I am an executive coach and a high-performing teams consultant. I work with organizations of all sizes, from small, family-owned businesses and entrepreneurial startups to industry-leading organizations. I help leaders and teams become high-performing together. The team I work with has identified 25 competencies needed to lead collaborative, innovative, and resilient teams. Today, we're going to cover the competency of self-starting. You'll learn how to get started quickly. Let's dive in. What is self-starting? It's demonstrating initiative and willingness to begin working towards goals. People who are well-developed in this competency display self-confidence, conscientiousness, assertiveness, persistence, and they're achievement-oriented. They project self-assurance in getting the task started. They possess a strong work ethic and a belief in getting results. They take initiative and they do whatever it takes to achieve their objectives. They start quickly they accept personal responsibility for achieving both personal and professional goals. They take initiative. They act without waiting for direction. One of the best ways to become a self-starter is to ask yourself, who are the key stakeholders in my life? Who are the people who will determine if I'm successful and thriving? And what does the next 12 to 18 months look like if I'm wildly successful? Make a list of these people. Your own name goes at the top of the list. Then arrange a one-on-one -on -one conversation with each person, starting with yourself. Ask, what do you appreciate about me? What are the strengths you want me to keep developing? What would you like me to do more of? What would you like me to do less of? What else can I do to be more effective in my work or in our relationship? And whatever you hear, say thank you. Don't become defensive with people. Appreciate what they're sharing with you. Make a list of everything you hear from your key stakeholders. Then go to work on playing to your strengths and developing your capabilities. Self-starters take action. Create a that's for me list. What's a that's for me list? It's a list of at least a hundred things, opportunities, experiences that you want to create in your own life. Push yourself to get at least 100 items or more on your list. A that's for me list could include skills you'd like to develop, people you want to meet, places you'd like to visit. This could become your personal vision document. As you bring this list alive, move items that you've accomplished from your that's for me list to your I did it list. There are three reasons we stop being self-starters. One, unclear priorities and unrealistic deadlines. Two, loss of trust in relationship with managers or peers. Feeling spied upon, micromanaged, squashed. And third, working for a leader who doesn't experience the consequences of their own decisions. How can we avoid these? Well, first, choose relationships and work environments where you can thrive based on your natural strengths and abilities. In my book, Conversations for Creating Star Performers, I spell out how to do this. No one can make that decision for you. Self-starters realize this, and they take accountability for their own successes and their happiness. If you find it difficult to be accountable to yourself, I encourage you to watch my video on accountability. See the link below. In my book, Conversations for Change, 12 Ways to Say It Right When It Matters Most, 
I outlined 12 different types of conversations for working professionals today. One is a conversation for action. Self starters excel at conversations for action. You want to use this type of conversation when you have agreed to a goal and you have a plan, you're ready to move forward. You also want to use this type of conversation when you're ready to get things done, both individually and as a team. You want to see the next action step. So here's some coaching tips from me. First, review your that's for me list daily for the next month. Pick the top five things you want to focus on over the next month. And for each item, ask yourself the question, what is the next action needed? And then take action. If you'd like guidance, direction, and accountability in developing new skills for yourself or your whole team, I'd be delighted to talk with you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. To learn more about the Professional Development Group, please check out our website at theprofessionaldevelopmentgroup.com. Thanks for joining me today.